Hi, and welcome to an episode of the JetRails podcast. I'm Robert, your host. Today, we're going to be talking about Magento themes. We're going to be talking about how the Magento ecosystem has been moving beyond the native Luma theme. And with us today, uh, we have Andreas from the IntegerNet team, who's going to be able to share some insights into what the community has been experiencing, what's been making people happy, <laughs> and what's really uh, been working, and what we can predict as some of the, the evolution of the front end of a Magento website, uh, both in its current state and in the years to come. So with no further ado, uh, Andres, would you do the honor of introducing yourself? Thanks, of course. Well, I'm Andreas von Stuttnitz. If you pronounce it in German, I am German, um, working at Integernet, a uh, best German company. Personally, I'm a developer. I started with Magento in 2008, with one of the first versions, and always kept to Magento, and I'm not doing anything else since then, um, except everything around Magento. And uh, I'm one of the company founders, co-founders, and uh, well, I'm here for talking about Hiva, I think. Yeah, well, uh, that's definitely going to be a big part of today's conversation. I know that uh, at events related to the Adobe Summit and the Magento Association's um, big meetup and Whova came up a lot. And so for those that aren't familiar, you're going to be hearing a lot about it in today's episode. But, uh, you know, Andres, thanks for coming on board today. I, I know it's always great for us to have a Magento master <laughs> uh, speaking as, as, with our audience and uh, sharing insights. I know that you've had a long time in the Magento community specifically. And, I, you know, I always love to ask about the names behind uh, these projects and companies. I want to start off with IntegerNet. Is there a good story as one of the co-founders of the agency uh, behind how you came to that name? Yeah, unfortunately, there's no good story about that. It came out of a brainstorming, a long brainstorming session, and we didn't come up with a really good and innovative name. So we chose something which sounded good in our ears. And uh, integer is a word. It means... Uh, something like full numbers um, if uh, we, are, we are all coming from the computer science and uh, we don't do half things. It's a German saying. I don't know if it's an English saying as well. Yeah, uh, we're not going to do anything halfway. Either we do it yeah. or we don't do it. I, I like it. <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. And the net part, it com comes because we are doing something with the net, the web. Yeah. So... That works for me. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> no. it, it seems to have stood the test of time. It hasn't. <laughs> it doesn't seem to have hurt you yet. So uh, I've I've seen uh, agencies that I I think are a lot more difficult to to understand what what they were thinking. I, th I think integers really do fit in with uh, computer science pretty well. And I, normally I only ask about your your company name, but in this case mm -hmm. we've already started to talk a little bit about Whova. Uh, at least mentioning it by name. Can you give me any background on that? Um, I know that I've had to work on my pronunciation. Uh, it is certainly, uh, you know, not, it didn't start out <laughs> as an English word. Uh, do you know the background there? Uh, the background of the word Hiva, um, it's a Finnish word um, from the Finnish language. And uh, it originates from Willem. Willem is the founder of Hiva. And he has been living in Finland for a couple of years, and uh, he brought this name back from there. And uh, it's a universal word for everything about being good. And yeah, I think it's just good. I like good. <laughs> good. Yeah. We it need more good. good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, speaking of, of good or... Uh, that's probably a really good segue into talking about where uh, Magento 2 is in terms of its base theme. Uh, you know, Magento 2 first, I, I want to say it launched in 2015. It really wasn't a, much of a launch, but <laughs> but officially it, it, it hit general release in 2015, mm -hmm. even though I, I think most of us don't want to accept that it was really viable until uh, sometime later. Uh, it, it was just a little buggy, but once the bugs were worked out, was the Luma theme ever 
great from a development standpoint? Did that was that ever really uh, at the top of its game in terms of being a, a front end theme uh, for building out an e commerce store? Uh, well, I must say I skipped like the first year of Magenta 2. Uh, we started with Magenta 2 development just uh, about a year later. And so at that time, the worst things have been had been fixed. So I don't know anything about those really early times. Um, from a development point of view, some parts worked really well, especially for those familiar with Magento 1. And um, like the PHTML files, um, the layout XML part, uh, it was all familiar to us. And it still works quite well. And it's the same way it worked in 2008. And um, it really hasn't changed a lot. Um, what was more difficult was to get into the CSS part on the one hand. Uh, it was done with less as a preprocessor and another step of preprocessing. So my colleagues na named it pre-preprocessing, which <laughs> was not so easy to get into and to grasp the concept. Um, it was, well, it was a little bit complicated to use. You could use it. It was a bit slow because it always took like half a minute uh, to regenerate the CSS, um, very developer friendly. Um, because you can get a lot of coffee in between. <laughs> well, that's definitely looking at the glass half full. I like that. <laughs> uh, well, you know, so I guess it sounds like coming from Magento 1 that mm -hmm. it was heavier, that it, it took some extra lifting to get into this particular uh, theme and to yeah. really, you know, run with it. But, mm -hmm. you know, for those that really started somewhere around Magento 2.1, once the bugs of the initial 2.0 launch were worked out, it was pretty stable. It just, uh, you know, it, there was a, a bit of a learning curve. And mm -hmm. uh, beyond that, it's still, uh, you know, it's still very popular in the market. So what's been pushing developers to want something else? You know, I, and I know that something else can mean different things. It could mean something like, like Hoover, which we'll get further into, but could also mean something like PWA Studio or a different PWA. What is driving the community toward things beyond Luma? Um, well, for me personally, it's one part of Magento 2, of the traditional Magento 2, and that's the UI components. Um, for those who don't know, uh, the complete Magento 2 checkout is built on UI components and other parts like uh, the shopping cart uh, page. Um, and it's a really complicated construct built of XML, um, knockout JS as the JavaScript part, um, and uh, PHP inside of it, and Require.js, another JavaScript library. And that thing is really, really hard to adjust. So if you ask any Magento 2 developer if they like to adjust the checkout, most of them will say it's the worst part in Magento. It does work. You can adjust it. It's very flexible, but it's it's really hard to grasp and to get into it and especially to debug it because you for example if you want to add a single field to to an address form you have to uh, build an xml file which is like 30 uh, 30 layers deep and if you make a mistake in one of those 30 layers um, nothing will work and you won't get an error message and um, it's it's really hard to, yeah. to work with that. So and, a lot um, more flexible than a SaaS platform where you can't do yeah. any of that in the first place, but not, not quick or easy for something like adding a no. field on the checkout. Uh, not you at know, all. For, yeah, so that's not that's interesting. So, you know, still flexible, but not mm -hmm. necessarily light. Uh, so yes. that makes sense. So there's this, this I'll say, <laughs> maybe I will uh, I'll put it in in flowery terms, but there was a longing for something that was simpler to work with that could really achieve the same end mm -hmm. goals without having to jump through as, as many hoops. Uh, yeah, and the other really big problem we, we have with the uh, traditional Magento 2 front end is its speed. 
So it's not so easy to get it up to really good speed. So you are quite used to wait like three seconds or so until you can really use a Magento 2 side. If it's a faster side for the slower ones, you have to wait uh, 10 or 20 seconds, uh, at least for the first page view on mobile, because there's a lot of JavaScript being loaded. There's a lot of CSS uh, being loaded, and it's several megabytes. Um, especially on slower mobile connections, it's really hard uh, to, to get it fast. And yeah, that I was one big hurdle from the merchant side and from the agency side, not so much from the agencies, uh, from the developer side, because we could work with it. Um, but for the customers and the merchants, it was not perfect, let's say. Yeah, I, from the web host side, it's one of the most common mm -hmm. themes that uh, that we run into in conversations um, with folks that are looking for a new web host. It's that they haven't been able to get all the right caching and speed optimization mm -hmm. uh, in their their from their hosting environment, and you know. And it, if your time to first byte is at two seconds, and then you're adding all of that, that those extra layers of complexity that aren't well mm -hmm. cached and all that, that there's so many points that we have mm -hmm. to help them to optimize to get them where they want to be. I mean, for us, it's it's an art and a science that it's what we do all day, but uh, we have run into that as a pretty constant issue with with merchants that haven't found the the right hosting environments or the right developers. It's really symbiotic. Um, you know, we can install the right caching, but, you know, it needs hole punching. It needs, uh, you know, certain mm -hmm. adjustments happening on, on the development side. So you really need experts on both sides of the fence that understand mm -hmm. it, because otherwise your Magento 2 site um, without the right speed optimization, I, I agree, it's a brick. And even then, I think one of the bigger challenges that I still run into with uh, with users that are still on on one of the, uh, you know, traditional themes like Luma um, it's even when we get the sites loading quickly, they still get pretty bad scores in some cases with some of the automated testing from, you know, from companies like Google. So, you know, you go, you run your, your Google page speed insights and, and get your scores. And, um, there's usually, uh, you know, a lot of things that are still coming up because of the coding style and, uh, and what it, it's trying to read through. So even though the actual loading speed might be quite fast, <laughs> the automated tests still don't like it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I think it's mostly because of the CSS and JavaScript, which is loading afterwards, uh, after the first byte um, or the last byte of the page. Um, it all accounts into, into the usability and into Google Lighthouse score, for example, yes. And yeah, and a web host cannot do much about that. No, I mean, there are things that we do through the content delivery networks, through the CDNs like Cloudflare mm -hmm. to minify and, you know, and compress and, uh, and and do all sorts of things. But yeah, there, there's a breaking point to <laughs> trying to beat the system in terms of this is what your actual coding is. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is the scanner that's going to read it. And how much can we really, um, you know, change along the route? But you know, so one of the answers that traditionally comes up in the community today, and there's been a lot of talk and a lot of focus and a lot of buzz in the last few years around progressive web apps, PWA. Mm -hmm. And Magento has their PWA studio, which I believe mm -hmm. is somewhere around version 10 now. Um, so they've continued to release updates uh, for that pretty consistently. There are other third-party PWAs that, um, that people have tried. I haven't found a clear winner um, and that includes just looking at our user base, um, which mm -hmm. is mid-market and, and enterprise uh, Magento users typically, who, you know, who would benefit from these sorts of things. And it's not that I've seen any one solution really grab the, you know, the baton, take the torch and run with it mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, uh, become the leader of the pack. There seems to be a, a pretty level set where it's still early adopter where people are trying this or that but mm -hmm. um but these things are, are still coming about from a developer's standpoint what's your take on pwa studio and some of these other progressive web apps uh, that are out there that that, um, that are available to magento users mm -hmm. well we we had that problem with the uh, traditional magento 2 front end and we needed a solution for that because we didn't want to start new projects on luma um, and 
so we were looking looking into the different solutions like PWA Studio, like Deity, like View Store Front, like Scandi PWA, like Front Commerce, and we were trying out a few of things in a prototype, and uh, we really liked View Store Front when we tried it out, and uh, we started two projects on it, and uh, like medium sized projects. It was uh, early last year when we started them, and uh, in the beginning, it went really well. It was a, a learning curve for our front-end developers because it's so different from the traditional Magento 2 front-end development. Um, but they got into it. But um, in the end, it turned out um, Review Storefront was not stable enough. So every task we finished, it um, brought up two new issues. Um, which uh, had to be solved. It was not so easy to to give good estimations, and uh, we yeah all the um, estimations we we failed on them, and um, the projects went longer and longer and longer, and um, yeah, it was not stable enough. It was hard to implement new things like new payment methods. Um, um, it turned out it was not a good solution, at least for us and for our projects. Yeah, so, and um, at least uh, you know for the time. And I think that that's part of the challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, when we see something like PWA Studio that in a few short years is up to version you know ten mm -hmm. and. You know, in the early days, I remember. I, I want to say that they they supported wish lists, but they didn't support <laughs> you know other core basic mm -hmm. functionality of a front end. Like that, it, it wasn't all there. That the amount of work to be able to launch a site with it uh, is certainly cumbersome. And then I think part of the other challenge is that a lot of these PWAs, it's the basic theme. But if you're going to run ten or twenty mm -hmm. Magento extensions that are going to be exposed to the front end of the website. Think things mm -hmm. like reward points and gift cards, and you know I could go on and on with, with things mm -hmm. that you know that have to then be exposed to the shopper. None mm -hmm. of those are natively integrated. It's not that you install the extension yes. and it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and it's going to be visible on on the front the way that maybe with Luma or something that mm -hmm. that these things were you know were, were built to uh, to work together. Yeah, I so, think these uh, frameworks address a totally different uh, target group, like. Uh, if you want to install 20 extensions to adjust your front end, then a PWA solution is not for you. But if you um, have very custom requirements for the front end and a bigger budget and a client who can pay for, for more development work, then you can get a really good and fast and custom solution with like PWA Studio. Um, but it takes time. It takes mm -hmm more people, it takes a full front-end team, I'd say, and it takes a certain budget. Yeah. And below that budget, you shouldn't start with any of the PWA solutions. And I think that there in lies the rub that, you know, for a lot of users, that launching a Magento 2 site is already a significant expense, uh, mm -hmm. just, you know, to put it diplomatically, that yeah. launching any serious e-commerce site, any mid-market or enterprise e-commerce site, uh, is a major expense as far as I'm concerned for any normal business budget. And then if you basically say we're going to extend the timelines on the project and we're going to extend the budget mm -hmm. in order yes. to use this newer, cooler tech, that's lovely. And and there's a return on investment, you know, for a larger business. Mm -hmm. But, you know, s there are folks that they just aren't prepared to budget for that, that they aren't mm -hmm. ready. The way that I like to describe this sometimes is that there's a spectrum for I want to be a merchant and I want to be mm -hmm. a tech company. And, <laughs> yeah. the, you know, every merchant falls somewhere in between there of, you know, I mean, they're in e-commerce. There's tech. They have to try new mm -hmm. features. They have to be innovative. They have to, you know, try to offer something in the experience that people can't get from buying from Amazon. They, they can't mm -hmm. just sit still. But the question is, how far on that spectrum do you want to run? And um, and how deep into the unknown do you want to go in situations like what you described uh, with, I believe it was View Storefront, where, uh, you know, you couldn't predict the budget well enough. Um, and I imagine if you did enough of those, you would just, you know, you'd know how to up estimate um, in, in 
2015, 2016, I was telling merchants uh, that wanted to go to Magento 2 that I, I was basically taking my Magento 1 budgets and adding 50% extra, and both to the timeline and to the budget, knowing that we'd have to work through a lot of bugs and that there would be things that they wanted that the extensions weren't ready for Magento 2. And we would just have to really, you know, early adopter mm -hmm. if people wanted to go there. But, you know, uh, I found that the challenge for that wasn't so much um, delivering that message. It was that they didn't want to build on Magento 1 anymore because that was old mm -hmm. tech and they didn't want to be early adopters of Magento 2. So it left people um, in a little bit of a bind for figuring out where to go. So uh, we've been keeping the audience waiting to hear about Whova. I think that this <laughs> is probably a pretty good time. So, yeah. you know, so there's the older tech, which works. Um, mm -hmm. but isn't necessarily the future from a development standpoint, isn't necessarily the fastest, the easiest to debug, et cetera. Uh, then you've got, um, you know, the PWAs and other things that are still more early adopter and more expensive, uh, in at least in many cases to work with, you know, a lot of the cases that I've run into. Mm -hmm. Is that why Whova came around as a different direction to go in, a different option? Yeah, it is. Um, it's totally because we had problems with all the solutions we knew uh, about front-end in Magento. We didn't want to use the old Magento uh, Luma front-end, and we didn't want uh, to use uh, any PWA framework uh, because of the problems I just mentioned. Um, but we didn't have an alternative solution. And uh, all the other agencies we talked to, uh, they didn't have a solution as well. And everyone was struggling and uh, we were struggling. And that was when my colleague Willem, Willem Birchmann, uh, it's, he's a Dutch guy from just over the border. Um, he came up with the idea to build something new. And this was uh, first because uh, he wanted to build a web shop for his wife selling jewelry and he didn't he he's a magento guy he's he was doing magento since i don't know several years and he didn't want to use another framework um, like shopify or shopware or uh Silius or whatever um so he wanted to stick to magento 2 but he didn't want to use any of those front ends and so um he thought and talked to people and uh, investigated uh, modern frontal technology, and then he came up with the idea to build something new. And he thought um, it can't be that much work if, <laughs> if you do it properly. And uh, so he, he tried it. He built a prototype in like three days, of course, not covering all the pages, but um, having the basic um, page elements available with a, yeah, with an okay design um, using Alpine JS for JavaScript part and um, uh, Tailwind CSS for the CSS part and throwing out, out all the old technology, especially the CSS and JavaScript technology. And then he had a new for framework theme, a uh, front end theme. And uh, it was blazingly fast. So um, he, Disabled the caches and it was still really fast, uh, below one second uh, or even faster. Um, and he liked what he what he was doing. He had so much fun working on it in, in his free time. Um, and that was the time when he proposed that it to our team. There, and there's an old saying that. Uh, you know, the ne uh, necessity is the mother of all invention that, mm -hmm. you know, here is and, you know, he has to build something for his wife and he's like, it's going to be Magento. That's the best. But I'm not I'm not going to maintain I'm not going to use this old, you know, front end technology that's there that that's, you know, I'm not giving that to my wife. Like, that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I think that that's really a, a kind of telling story for how something like this comes about. You know, there are other popular themes in the Magento community, but most of them that I think of are either based on Luma or are really focused yeah. on um, on adding a lot of modules, on being mm -hmm. more of an accelerator so that instead of having to install 20 extensions, that you're basically just installing a theme that's already pre-configured mm -hmm. with all these things that work together. And that's lovely, 
But, yeah. you know, taking the opposite approach and saying, you know, this isn't about loading up 50 extra things. This is about coming up with, with something clean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, clean uh, and fast. Okay. I, I, um, I'll admit, I often buy Google phones, like, you know, Pixel phones, mm -hmm. partly because I don't want all the bloatware that comes mm -hmm. with a lot of the, the other phones from other manufacturers that I want to start with something closer to a clean install of Android. And the same applies to lots of other things. So there's definitely something to be said for that. Uh, you know, that do you really need all of this code, all this technical debt, all these things that you're not going to use if that's the case? If, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think it's always cost benefit analysis. I, I love the idea of starting with something streamlined. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it sounds like that, that really uh, came to fruition. Do you have an mm -hmm. idea around? So it sounds like he had a prototype up within days, but about mm -hmm. how long it took from breaking ground on this for it to be market ready where it could be made available to others? Um, well, I think it started it early July last year um, and proposed it uh, to use it in a project in August, uh, mid of August, I think. I was involved into that project as a de backend developer as well. And he proposed it uh, to us as a team and to the front-end developer. Uh, and uh, well, he he did the groundwork in that project, so we tried it out. And um, the the other front-end developer continued with uh, yeah building the CSS. And it was like three or four weeks until the front-end part of that project was finished. It was not a big project, uh, to be honest. It was a B2B project uh, without um, too many requirements um, on the front-end part. But still, we had the full web shop uh, running in like four weeks, and uh, we implemented all the customer account stuff during that time, uh, which went back into the Hoover pr uh, product again. And I think we launched it a month later in September. And um, it was production ready at that time, at least for many purposes, not for all purposes. Um, Hoover was released in a 1.0 version in, uh, I think, end of January or February um, this year. And since then, um, it is absolutely production ready and uh, several dozen agencies are using it for their projects. Um, we have released, I think, four projects uh, with Hoover up to now and um, having a good time doing so. And especially our front end developers, they really like the uh, increased speed they have in development and the increased stability and better loading times. Um, yeah. And I've seen some of the uh, Google page speed scores coming off of some mm -hmm. of these sites, and it's quite impressive. Uh, you know, not what I'm used to from the average Magento site. So uh, I know that that's uh, onto itself an achievement. Mm -hmm. You know, in terms of the time to launch, I know that compared to a PWA, it's going to be faster from everything that I've heard described. Compared to loading up a Magento site with Luma, um, is it, and knowing that you might have to, with, with Hoover being a new theme, that uh, there might be a little bit more work if there are some extensions being used to expose some of those, that there might be, you know, some things with Hoover as a newer theme that, um, you know, that, that you might still uh, work around case by case, um, although, you know, I, I haven't heard of a lot of trouble, so <laughs> that's always... Nice. Is it is it faster on a build? Does it shave time off of your estimate if you're going to use Hoover as opposed to Luma? Um, we didn't do a direct comparison. What we did is uh, we restarted the two views to offer projects I told you about earlier uh, with Hoover, both mm -hmm. of them. And uh, they were finished in half the time we used for the views to offer part, which we aborted then. And um, we, uh, I think the numbers were like we used 240 hours in front end for uh, for the view storefront part. And when we redid it with Hoover, we used 80 hours for the same 
requirements and the same visual appearance. And so uh, just one third of the time we used to use storefront. Um, we did a survey about how much um, the development time is, uh, yeah, the development time is reduced compared to Luma. And most people said it is more the, uh, less than half the time or at least less than 75% of the time. So it really shaves off some development time. It's hard to estimate how much exactly, but because no is, two projects are exactly the same. So there's yeah, not a good control there, uh, scientifically speaking. Yeah. 50, 75% uh, range, and much less than a PWA project, yeah. at least for, for our experiences. I know that building the site is, is obviously you know, a major undertaking and expense for the merchant, mm -hmm. but maintenance is often, you know, <laughs> uh, you know the, the longer term conversation, of course. Uh, in terms of budgets and bugs and timelines and things, uh, do you, have, have you experienced any kind of an impact of using Whova versus some of these other options in terms of ongoing maintenance of the storefront? There's not so much needed in my experience. Um, well, there are regular Hoover updates, um, but if you don't have a, an issue with your existing project, you don't need to update. Except, of course, if there's some security update, but we haven't experienced that yet. Um, and uh, updating the front end is not that much of an issue. Um, it's like updating the front end part of a of Luma, and um, that was never the um, really expensive part of updating. Except when some new concept got introduced, like form keys or so. Um, but uh, I have the impression that we already have a good base, a stable base um, with Luma, and uh, there won't be that many um, needed updates, let's say. Yeah. Well, and I know you mentioned earlier that a lot of the challenges with the Luma theme had to do with some of the older uh, coding languages and methodologies used comparatively looking at a newer cleaner leaner stack being used with uh, with Whova you know as opposed to debugging the old knockout js or some of these other things has it been substantially different for you and your team yeah well personally i cannot tell because i'm not a front end front end developer i did a little bit of front end stuff making it compatible to some modules um but um Debugging is much easier. That's that's true, especially for the JavaScript part, because we use Alpine JS, and uh, that has some debugging extensions for Chrome. Um, and uh, well, it's it's just less code, and mm -hmm. if you have less code, it's much easier to find the uh, the right um, position where to. Uh, where to check and um, especially it doesn't deliver uh, megabytes of unused code which is never executed well that's lovely <laughs> yeah uh, a lot of waste out there um, mm -hmm. and uh, there's all kinds of impacts of all that and you know leaner code sometimes you know fewer servers less infrastructure mm -hmm. impact uh, exactly. don't get me wrong I, I work for a web host where we're happy to provide the extra infrastructure, but mm -hmm. we like to see merchants that are successful, that have you know healthy budgets, that are really performant. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we spend a lot of time trying to help uh, you know our clients to debug and cache and um, you know and, and really optimize yeah. and figure out ways of doing things that aren't just going to throw more infrastructure at a problem. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you know you really do need to. <laughs> Think about the tech stack and you know, where can you really optimize? Because long term, that's just a lot healthier mm -hmm. for everyone. Uh, yeah, well, we have experience with an, uh, we, we are working with another bigger agency, and uh, we have uh, completed a view storefront project together with them. Uh, they over budget, but that's uh, another topic. Um, but the biggest problems we have with running that project is that we need so much more infrastructure. Like we don't only need the Magento 2 
uh, stuff, but we also need to run the front end and we need to run the API, which is running on Node.js. And we have two different clouds because the Magento cloud doesn't support the um, uh, view storefront uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, that always gives problems because yeah. there are so many parts involved. Yeah. It's interesting that when you get to something more complex, you know, you start out by thinking, oh, we have, you know, we have this lean thing. It's going to operate very easily. But, you know, we have Shopify plus users that come to us for hosting their custom apps and integrations and things because there's nowhere to install any code. You know, there's mm -hmm. that if, if you need to do something that you can't do with an existing app or what have you that um, that you need that we partner with big commerce around that to help, you know, their enterprise users that, that run into that. Uh, kind of a situation. And I think that that's always, you know, a point of, of interest is that, you know, you, in a lot of cases, these projects start off thinking about how can we really, you know, simplify things <laughs> and the opposite winds up happening in, in the long run. Uh, that now you need a lot of, of different infrastructure doing a lot of different things. Uh, you know, so we've talked about a, a few different directions that merchants can mm -hmm. actively go in today. Um, there are still folks on Magento 1 planning out their builds on Magento 2 and lots of others that are, you know, coming over from other platforms or just really, you know, getting into the market, including some really established businesses that just, uh, you know, haven't uh, taken certain pieces of their business into e-commerce, lots of B2B organizations in that situation for the first time going direct to consumer or, uh, you know, or offering, you know, wholesale or distribution sales online. Mm -hmm. um, I know that Hoove is built to work with Magento 2.4 and up. So, mm -hmm. you know, so that's a consideration that if someone is already on M2 and let's say on, you know, some version of 2.3 and not really thrilled with their speed or front end or what have you, that, that they mm -hmm. need to upgrade to be compatible. Are there any other considerations from the way that you approach this in terms of which you'd recommend? I know that we touched on that there are going to be some large users that might very well benefit from uh, a PWA front end. Mm -hmm. But are there still times when you might tell someone to use Luma as opposed to Whova? Or basically, Whova is the future from, from your seat, and it's pretty holistically just uh, going to be a better fit from what you've seen so far, at least, from the projects that have come across your desk? <laughs> yeah, well, the only time I recommend uh, using Luma is when they already have a, an existing Luma frontend, which is running OK, at least, and uh, where a lot of work has gone into. Um, so in that case, it's a huge investment to change the front and, and to yeah, introduce I mean, it, Hoover. Let's say that go, going back to an 80 hour estimate, mm -hmm. um, you know, I know that, you know, there are certainly a lot of different vendors that might require, you know, a different number of hours based on how, mm -hmm. especially how they bill, what they consider a billable hour, mm -hmm. um, lots of different rates out there. But I, I can estimate based upon average agency rates. And you know, that's not a small investment. Um, if basically to get your site looking the same, um, mm -hmm. you know, maybe to get some speed improvements or yeah. uh, improve some of the long-term mm -hmm. coding and debugging and what have you, you know, some, you know, maybe not to say that there wouldn't be some potential return on investment, but basically to get something that looks exactly the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it only, that's a lot only of money. makes sense if you want to invest uh, and if you want to have a refreshed front end. Um, so, uh, that would be my recommendation in every case where you want to build something new or want to have really good improvements over the existing stuff, then you should use Hoover. Um, but of course, it's an investment. Yeah. And I was looking over the feature list for Hoover, um, mm -hmm. which includes uh, very nicely some things that are included, some that are future considerations for future releases. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that the the checkout, you have the option of using uh, a Hoover checkout, of mm -hmm. sticking with the old Luma checkout if you've integrated, I, I would mm -hmm. imagine, a lot of extensions and things for shipping and mm -hmm. uh, and payments and all kinds of things that, uh, that that might make sense. 
or mm -hmm. at least for a period of time. Um, I know that there are some other, uh, you know, probably long-term partnerships there with some of the extension developers, mm -hmm. like One Step Checkout. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any thoughts around that? I, I thought that was particularly unique. Um, yeah. The sites that, that you've built, have you, you know, or that your team has built, have they primarily used the Whova checkout? Uh, it's a good question. Um, no, at least not all of them. We are using different checkouts, and that's one of the strengths of Hoover, but also one of the, let's say, weaknesses, uh, because Hoover doesn't really come with an integrated checkout. There is a Hoover checkout, which is a separate open source project, um, but it is built on different technology. It's built on React, and it's not using um, the Alpine stack we are using for the Hoover theme. Um, and that's mostly because the uh, checkout is much more dynamic than the rest of the pages. There's so much things moving around and depending on each other and updating. And uh, so it makes sense to, to have a more complex um, yeah, technology using for that to um, really support those kind of updates. And sense. So uh, still maybe a little hard to add that address line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, all right. Yeah, but, 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 but still, it's, um, yeah, we have those different solutions and uh, there's heavily heavy work going on with the Hoover checkout at the moment. And uh, we are using it for most of our projects, uh, but only because we have the knowledge of the Hoover checkout. It's a different text stack, so you need React developers uh, to adjust it. And if you don't have them and don't have the budget and want to have a default checkout, you can easily use the Luma checkout. Of course, you then have the UI components again. Um, but that's a trade-off then. Um, on the other hand, if you want to have an adjusted checkout and have at least some budget and uh, a React developer, then uh, the Hoover checkout is a good idea. And it's much easier to adjust it than uh, to adjust uh, the default Interesting. Um, do my checkout. Interesting. Look, so I mean, we wind up with merchants that use you know, third-party systems like Bolt that take over the checkout completely mm. anyway, that completely yeah. offboard it, you know, to a, a more SaaS experience, mm -hmm. really fast, highly optimized checkout, uh, you know, other solutions like that. And then there are the extensions like One Step Checkout that really, mm -hmm. you know, that's their raison d'etre. <laughs> <That's, laughs> they, they named the company well, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they are providing that checkout experience. So I, I feel like, you know, merchants do have some good choice in that respect, and it sounds like that'll continue to evolve. Um, in terms of the roadmap, anything else that you're excited for that's coming down the pike with Whova, or anything that you wish that it had today that you suspect or, or, or anticipate that it will soon? Uh, well, it's the thing that is missing mostly is uh, commerce support, so it's the Adobe commerce support. Um, it's Hoover is always supporting all my, almost all of the um, Magento open source features, um, but there are some commerce features still missing. Luckily, we have page builder integration with Hoover. Um, there's uh, John Hughes of uh, FishEye in the UK who built that integration for a project and he open sourced it. And so it can be used for all Hoover users. Um, but uh, there are some features still missing, like RMA or like quick order or um, like store credit, which are not supported yet. Because um, to be honest, uh, we have most of the Hoover users who are using open source edition of Magento. Yeah. Well, and as Adobe Commerce evolves and you see more. PWAs there in the first place, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, and different things are are basically going SaaS there, where you have something like Live Search that was released, which you know, Search takes up uh, an interesting portion of the front end experience mm -hmm. in terms of you know, faceted search, layered navigation, search filters, yeah. and you know, and categories and such, and mm -hmm. and search pages and other things that. Um, 
you know, I, I think that open source is really the community, at least from, from my personal experience, that's the hungriest mm -hmm. <laughs> for something new like this. And I, I think that that makes sense. So uh, it sounds like if, if folks like, like John uh, are, uh, are, you know, doing some great stuff and open sourcing it, have to just absolutely love and appreciate the open source community that mm -hmm. continues to move these things forward. That's awesome. Whova itself is a paid theme. So there, there's yes. an expense there. Is, is anything there open source where teams like yours are contributing something back as you do work on it? Or as a paid theme, is it really a little bit more of a closed uh, source code? It's quite interesting uh, because it mixes both concept. It is, as you said, a commercial Thing, and there's a one-time fee of a thousand euros uh, if you want to use Hoover for a project. Um, but if you have paid them, you have a community again. It's a big part, at least in my feeling, it's a big part of the Magento community. Um, it's more than 50 agencies working with it. It's a lot of current and former Magento masters working with it. And there's a Slack with 650 uh, members right, right they now. They haven't put me in that one yet. Uh, they're probably mm, lucky. I, <laughs> I, can, I can invite you. <laughs> <laughs> well, and uh, there's a lot going on in there in, indeed. And uh, agencies are yeah, contributing to the, to the core of Hoover on the one hand and uh, with um, compatibility modules on the other hand, um, especially for open source modules, but also for popular um, paid modules like the MSD modules. Um, and uh, in many cases, uh, when an agency has built an integration to such a module, um, they give it back to the Hoover community. And there's a GitLab uh, where you can access all those modules. And there's a lot going on. And especially uh, the Hoover team itself. And uh, with that, uh, there's mostly two persons working on that on a daily basis. Um, and those two persons that are Willem. Willem Wichmann, uh, the founder, and Vinay Kopp. You probably know him. He's a Magento Absolutely. legion. Uh, and they are both very active and uh, providing help to um, developers having questions about how to implement something. And uh, it's there's really quite some activity inside it. It feels like community in the earlier days of Magento. And for example, we have a, we had a Hoover release party with more than 200 participants. We'll have a Hoover meetup next week, of course, remote at the moment, uh, where about 100 people are expected, I'd say. And um, people like to yeah, share their knowledge and uh, discuss about things. And it really feels like the most active part of the Magento community for me. Fantastic. And if agencies or developers or others want to get involved in that community, want to learn more about that community, do you have any suggestions for how they go about it? They can always reach out to me and I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll connect some dots, but, um, you know, would they just go to the, the Hoover website or? Yeah, that's the uh, one thing uh, you can go to the Hoover website and, uh, buy the theme and then you automatically get invited and get access to uh, GitLab and all the documentation and videos and stuff. Um, or you, if you have another good reason, for example, if you're an extension vendor and want to make your modules compatible to it, uh, then you uh, write an email uh, to info at huber.io and most probably you will get invited as well. Lovely. Awesome. Well, uh, all of that sounds you know, since really exciting. I, I think that the real question here that's still unanswered, though, is what kind of review Willem's wife left based on his work? Because I, I really think that that's the person that has to be satisfied with, with this theme. <laughs> well, the, the problem is that that shop isn't finished yet. So he was so distracted by the Hoover product and building other shops and... Um, stuff around Hoover, he's so enthusiastic about it. And so I think the his wife's shop got left 
behind a little bit. I'm not involved. Into That's that very fun. I did not know uh, that when I, I asked I that question, how... but <laughs> the, the old saying goes, the, the cobbler's children go without shoes. Yes. <laughs> you know, so the shoemaker is so busy selling shoes to everyone else, making everyone else's that uh, mm. he doesn't have time to do it for his own family. That I, I think that that really, I've experienced that, you know, I, in my agency days, we'd be, you know, working on things for family and, uh, you know, clients would start calling, mm -hmm. <laughs> <And>, you know, <laughs> the, the yeah, people that put money on the table, they had to get some precedent in a lot of cases, mm -hmm. um, or at least the, you know, the people that, um, that would fire you as opposed to just giving you a dirty look at, at a holiday meal. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, the, the, certain things that we put up with, with from family, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, it's a labor of love, but that's pretty funny. Well, before we wrap up, you've been really generous with your time today. Any final thoughts, anything that we didn't touch on that you think that the Magento community should be aware of or people interested in Whova should be aware of or, you know, just predictions for the future? <laughs> well, for, for me, the biggest benefit of using Whova is, is uh, that the developers working on it are much more happy than they have been with few storefront or with Luma and they enjoy their work much more. They get more progress done and uh, they are much more enthusiastic and that speeds things up, that brings more money, that uh, makes everyone happy, not only the developers, but also the managers and the client. Um, and it really feels like like a new beginning of of something great and uh, you know i've really been at this it. a long time and mm -hmm. until now i don't think anyone explained to me that developers could be happy is that really a thing <laughs> it is it is absolutely <laughs> no, no no i i i joke it's you know i for anyone that hasn't sat next to developers coding away all day and mm -hmm the challenges of working through bad code <laughs> and, oh, yeah. um, and you know and the interruptions sometimes you know as life happens in an agency uh i, I think that remote has gone well for for some people in that respect mm -hmm. that uh you know fewer things happening in an office and such to distract maybe uh you know at home there might be other distractions who knows but at least in some cases but um but now I, I couldn't agree more that um, look, I knew years ago developers that really stopped supporting Magento One, not because they thought that there was something bad about working on Magento One, but they didn't want their skill set to mm -hmm. fall by the wayside. They didn't want to get left mm -hmm. behind in technology uh, that in a lot of cases, developers, from my personal experience, they want to... Uh, be able to move forward and they, exactly. they want to be able to use better tools and mm -hmm. who wouldn't, right? You know, it's, yeah. it's all yeah, very absolutely. logical when you sit down and think mm -hmm. about it, but how often do we as a community sit down and think about what's going to make the developer's life better? What's going to make them happier? I think that it's a great mm -hmm. way of looking at this. Yeah, that's also my personal experience. I'm, as I said, a backend developer and I need to get into new stuff now and then. And at the end of my Magento One days, um, I was a little bit exhausted, let's say, and it was always the same and the same requirements. And then I started with Magento Two and I felt so energetic and enthusiastic again. And um, it just feels good to learn something new and uh, to work with modern technology. And uh, that's the same with front-end developers right now, I think. Um, and uh, even the back-end developers have new things to do, to work with, like GraphQL, which Huber is working a lot with. And uh, it's absolutely necessary for developers to learn new things and experience new things, modern technologies now and then. I think we should just start thinking about coding as video gaming. And, you know, okay, after give or take maybe as much as 10 years of Magento 1, I think that developers really deserved <laughs> uh, Magento 2 that they could really get excited about. And, uh, you know, and at this point, I, I'll just consider Whova some kind of expansion pack that really enhances mm -hmm. the game and improves it uh, even more. And I, that's, that's going to be a fun thought for me for a while. So uh, that's awesome. It. 
Yeah. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for joining and for sharing all of your insights. Um, yeah. You know, I, I hope to get updates in the future and, uh, you know, hear about the, the, the latest and greatest things uh, as we continue to roll forward. But um, in the meantime, for our audience, as always, thanks for tuning in. Mm-hmm. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy sailing out there. Thank you. Thanks, Robert, for inviting me, and have a good time. <laughs>